Hey guys, this is Ken from Man Cave Effects, and today I'm in Vianden in Luxembourg, and I'm um, visiting VGS. Vian Galactic Space Yards. That's a, a, a prop building company, right? Or prop building shop, yes. Prop building shop. This is Paul. Paul is a prop builder. So you're building props for movies and theaters and the whole in entertainment industry, right? Yes, and um, sometimes even for private people, but mostly for film, yes. How long, how long are you doing this? Well, I'm with film 28 years and must be about a bit more than 18 years I'm building props. I built the stuff that they cannot buy. It's cheaper to buy it if you can at the shop. And if they need a science fiction dashboard, medieval stuff, something that looks hard but is soft. Okay. Yes, so, I'm building. So, and, and you're like famous for using um, your own practiques to, to build things, like without using fancy 3D printers and laser cutters and, and, and vacuum machines and stuff like that. Yes, I try to be flexible. If you're really in specialized in one thing, you might have the perfect machine for those things. But I do a lot of different things, so I try to use simple tools and tricks because some Tomorrow somebody's going to ask something completely different and the super special machine might not do the trick for that one. So I'm using quite common tools mostly. I brought you a little challenge today actually. I brought you this shovel. Oops. And I would need you to make a shovel that we can use for a movie, for a stunt sequence, so we can hit somebody with it. Can you do that? I surely, I surely can do that. I've never done a shovel to hit somebody with. I've done other stuff to hit people with. But uh, I'm pretty sure I can do that, yes. Well, I would say I will follow you around through your shop. Okay, Paul, I would say, yes, let's go. Sure. Why aren't you using a vacuum forming machine? Because I do not have one. I find vacuum forming machines very interesting. But I would probably only use it like once a year, once every two years, and then you have it standing around. And if you have stuff standing around that you don't need, need then you don't have space for the other stuff that you need.
what kind of plastic are you using there? This plastic is actually made for back form. I recuperated some on another project. It's not very expensive stuff, but also many other plastics do bend very nicely when you heat them up. And you don't always need the absolute perfect material for this sort of stuff. Also, I would use a heat gun, but mine broke, so... So essentially you're using tools nearly like everybody could have at home. It's nothing I'm special. I'm using nothing... preferably what you can buy at the local gas station. Um, <laughs> or anywhere near what can be found. It's nice to have the special tricks. But you don't always have them in time for what's asked. And if you have cheap tricks, um, you can try out. You know, it's if you break it, it's not all that bad. Usually, I would build like two or three. One is to tr to in case one breaks. Uh, also, I might build two or three versions of the of the shovel because they might need it for harder for a harder use or for softer use or. Some actors go for fairly hard eggs, or there might be stunt people used to using it. You might have wind up with a child actor, so you want very, very soft stuff, go very gentle. Getting close. Also a note, very important actually. I'm doing a lot of things which generally basically unsafe. The way I use jigsaws as a sculpturing tool, certain things without protection. I have a, quite an experience of what works and what will fly in my face. Um, not a good idea just to try that out like that. Only do stuff when you're sure it works that way. It's not good. Your eyes and fingers are important items and difficult to replace. A jigsaw will project stuff in a certain direction. After years you will know where it never projects. If you cut stuff like that you want to go close to see, put on glasses. I do for other things. It's not just cool not to use safety. Okay, we got a basic shot. Not the absolute beauty, but we shall make it so. And now, in Luxembourgish. there actually was black when they bought it then it's rusted and you're not always sure how things turn out because if you have used the same material over and over again you know exactly what spray paint will do exactly what on what material in practical terms you do something slightly different always and you don't 
Um, so essentially you take the spray paint you got or you find right away at the local store, you try it out, you cannot do much wrong. There are very few texture sprays which happen to be good. A lot of texture sprays tend to clog up or not be consistent. I'm usually using things like sawdust for textures. Uh, in fact, that shovel originally did not have any texture whatsoever. It was nice flat black metal, black painted metal. And uh, so black spray is pretty much the good basis. Now I'm going to take when this is half dry, I'm going to see maybe find some a little bit thinner sawdust and start doing the the rusty bit. So let's see the sawdust. That might do. So in this case, since the rust actually had a specific pattern. I will try to replicate it more or less. We're going for, for a vast, very fast action shot, but let's say this side so is you, very you, rusted, so I'm just make, putting enough paint so it sticks with the paint. Right, you're using the paint as a glue. I'm using basically. the paint as a glue, yes. Um, by the way, if you do this with Uh, with normal paint, not spray paint, you make normal paint and sawdust make an extremely resistant surface. As in you will have a problem hurting it, even with a sander. And this is not a perfect replica we're trying to make. So it's more a very, what we're trying is a very good impression of the original thing. If you don't have right. sawdust, sweep your floor. Normal dust might do the trick. <laughs> and if it doesn't, the worst can happen. It will fall off. Could you use sand? Um, you make something different. It's not. It's sand is much more regular. Uh, sand is good if you want to build a little wooden castle and you make want to make it look like stone. It's very good. Uh, also, sand does not stick as well. Uh, sand does not absorb, usually. Okay. And if I find out later that this is too thick, I can just rub it very gently with a... with a piece of sandpaper or even a, the rough side of kitchen sponge. Very good tool. Very good tool for, as well, fine sanding or if you have only gloss spray at hand and the thing gets too glossy, just rub it over very gently with the rough side of the kitchen sponge. Oh, okay. If you have brand new stickers on the car, they should look old. It works very well as well. And yes, I'm spraying like a child. It's not, we're not trying to make, if we're trying to make a model car, we spray different. In this case, I'm making an old shovel. So yes, you just spray like you feel. And if it's a bit bumpy, it might even add to nothing. Plus I'm trying to put on enough paint to have the sawdust stick. So we're going to make rust. Rust. We take, in this case, acrylic paints because I have them. We might also give it a little bit of a spray. We have some different browns. We look at this. This is a lighter brown, which might still work. Essentially, the idea is use what you have. Oh, 
Okay, so last little trick um, for metallic effects. If the paint is not completely dry yet, it also works when the paint is dry, but you get dirty actors afterwards. You take a little bit of graphite, you get it to lubricate things, and you put it put it in. Ideally, just just before the paint dries, and you don't really get like fingers, but you get. If you rub it, it's a very real metallic effect. If you just do it without, if you just do it with without the spray paint to stick it in, it'll still work, but it will rub off again and it will rub off on the actors. Should we say this is more or less finished? Good. All so, right. Essentially, next part is going to be the handle. Okay, so here's what we bought for less than 20 bucks total with the paint. Uh, we bought some insulating material. We want to replicate this more or less. If we would use the real one, someone, somebody might get hurt just with the wood and not the shovel. So we need something soft enough if it gets hit. But it needs to be a little bit less floppy than this. Um, so we bought as a tryout this rod, which I'm not sure, some sort of plastic from the plants, which is very light and seems to be flexible enough. So it could work, we need to bend it, we need to find out how we do it, probably with heat. Then we bought an aluminum angle, because I still have a PVC electric pipe. And we might put that in there. The, the PVC pipe is very light, but might wobble about too much. So with the combination of the two, it might do well. We'll find out. We have two options. And we bought a can of spray primer, because with these foams, they're all different, and you never know how they paint. So first thing we're gonna do is make paint tests, see what holds on here. So I will primer up one part. See what happens. Now I'm trying some white acrylic paint. Put on directly. I put some on the primer as well. See if there's difference. This is just purely a test thing. Okay, so we're testing the results of our test piece. We had spray primer, and we're scratching over it and see if it will work for this purpose. Um, acrylic from Art Supplies, better but not good enough. Other acrylic from Art Supplies, even better, but still a bit on the shaky side. Brown spray paint doesn't work. That's acrylic paint from a pot, stuff you paint doors with and so, and seems to work very good. So, that's gonna be it. We're gonna do our base coat later on with that. The reason for these tests is every foam is different, every spray paint is different. You can never find out beforehand if things will work or not until you tested it. So, we do not know how it bends. We suppose it will bend with heat. And we got our shovel handle, original, here. We need to put a gentle bend in here. Not too bad. So, what we're going to try to do is heat it up. And maybe another heat source might be nicer. And what we try to do is heat it gently so it doesn't melt in one spot and it'll warm up to the core.
It could be that it's just PVC code and that there's something super hard in there. But it was really cheap and it's worth a try. I will attempt to bend it a bit with force. Let's see if that works. Just bent a little bit, but in a strange way. I suppose there is some sort of a tube in there. We'll let it cool down. The bend would be right. And yes, there's a metal tube in there. So, we let it cool down and see. That well, seems pretty good. Yeah, later on. We will have to put two of these nicely together. If we try to put them together like this, it might e show easier. So, what we do, a little trick, we take a color knife and we give these two the same angle cut. Hmm. Double blade. It will still work for this. Now we have the same angle. And these will fit together better and will hide the joint a little bit better. So, next thing is we want to slide them on. And a little bit of lube will likely help. I use silicon spray. I think you have. Will do. Actually, in this case, even kitchen oil might work. And just like when you put on your socks in the morning, pulling something over something doesn't work, you have to push it. You can't remove your socks by pulling on the front tip. So you have to push it from behind in this case. So let's see what this does. This does nicely and it works till here. We'll have to fit this on the shovel later on. So we want it just slightly flatter. So we just knock it a bit with a hammer. I got a piece of metal here as in sort of an anvil. And I got a hammer. Foams tend to behave very strangely when sanding, so we just try it. This is pretty much critical part. The shovel will need to be fitted with the main part to the handle, as this here, not being metal, is not solid enough to be sure will hold. So stand a bit off here. So we're closer with the met with the rod to the plastic metal, and we'll do that. We're trying to fit this part, not this part. In reality, this holds the shovel. The plastic shovel might break if we do. So, this here needs to be fitted on that plastic, and there's too much of a gap. And the shovel will go that way. It's a real piece of art. And this seems to be it. Pretty good. Now we can pull from the over it. Check it with that. Still pretty good. Now in order to fix it, later on we'll need to put in a screw 
from here to down there. So we will keep that screw discreet. We can be very discreet people. So we take just a little Okay, we're finally getting to decorating the wood, which I said I found one sort of paint which holds. Unfortunately, one that one is brown, dark brown. So we either use it as a bait coat, or I find something to mix it with. Next part is in the paint shop. So we. Just have some acrylic sealant. Usually works well for those stuff. And since I don't want all over my fingers, I'll use a glove. It is not bad having it on your fingers, it's no big problem. Acrylic, don't use silicone, use acrylic. It mixes with waters and has way faster drying times. Acts a bit as glue as well as a filler and you can just happily push it close smear it around with your fingers and it won't hurt your fingers or anything no toxic vapors none of that with whatever you put on the surface uh, you can't sand afterwards because you'll break the surface and then things start looking very weird. This will never be perfect because it's flexible and there will be a different material in here than there is here. But still, uh, for an action scene, it's, it's going to be okay. Put it on there. I will put a little bit on here to hide my little truck. I put in the end hole. And again, I can rub off the rest all over the place to make uh, as a bit of camouflage. Don't forget we got a, 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 a very used handle. Acrylic paint on acrylic mastic so that there will be no, no bad reactions. We always think wood is brown but in fact the original is almost grey whitish. A little bit of water helps acrylic paint to dry. I didn't put water in this time because we're really trying to cover up all the rubbery looks. But uh, light is a very important factor in heat also, but light is much more important than we think. So if you got a halogen spot, it's a very good combination. Okay, we're one day later in Fion Galactic Space Yard. And this morning I experimented a bit because yesterday we built the beautiful shovel which came out really nice and I experimented because I love to experiment and also because one thing I'm a little bit worried is about this joint if the actors hit really hard with it it could possibly break probably won't but it could and this is for real film so it's not an option that it can break uh, so I tried out different things, some of which did not work, but I found out one really cool thing. I really love to work with recuperated materials. And recently I worked at a abandoned industrial place and they had a lot of these warning signs in every size and shape. And they're really good quality. And so I played around with them and found out they you can use them with heat 
almost in the same way as the um, the vac form stuff. It takes a little more heat, takes a little bit more time to cool. It's not quite as easy, but it's very, very close. So first I made a little thing to put on on the handle to have a solid surface that we can put this over and that we can then put a screw into. I epoxy that on. We will still paint it of course. So that this is actually held by this sort of plastic. And uh, since I was experimenting, I actually also made another shovel out of the same thing, which I covered in cardboard, which is an experiment, seems to work quite well. Cardboard was just an idea I wanted to try out. And now we have, we want to put in a little screw, camouflage it. It's actually, the hole will not really hide the screw. Counter sink a little bit. And we do this by hand since it's very light plastic. And we don't really want to break things now. Break things seems to work. So. Hmm. Now we just paint this up a little bit and essentially ready. Okay, so um, the shovels are done. I think they're good. This one is flexible up to a point and then it will break. This one, we really have to use incredible amount of violence to break it and then you will hurt the actor before you break the shovel. Um, so technically this one is probably the better one, but it's not quite as beautiful for close-up, which again, for a scene, they're gonna use the real shovel for most of the stuff, and then you're gonna see somebody grab this thing, smack him. Just so you're probably never gonna see the the difference. But I want to try it. Okay, and I saw you also build like a box. Is this something you always do when you're building props? You build I'm it? trying to because in real life there's gonna be a standby prop guy. He's gonna have a truck full of stuff. He's gonna have a load of stuff to put out, take back every day. A lot of work and. Uh, in the truck, so we don't want him to have this shovel just flying about the truck and he might not have all that time to wrap it up real nice and all the stuff so this one's fairly safe, you can tuck it in somewhere uh, this one might be flying a bit around, lying in a bag or so, which is not the best so, just put a box, tack some old... I made the box from just a couple pieces of wood without cutting them that I had Put a little bubble wrap in there. He can tuck him in the shelf. Won't get hurt. All right, Paul. It was a pleasure. Absolutely. So thank you very much. And uh, <laughs> I hope uh, I will see you soon. Okay. And if you guys like this video, um, just leave me a comment below. And um, yeah, we will make some uh, some more videos at VGS. I would say we will <laughs> definitely build more stuff. All right, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, guys. Until then, see ya. Bye.